Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this new game that I found on the internet. This is called Monster Prom, and it is about a bunch of monsters who all exist in a high school, and they all are absolutely freaking insane, and there will be pretty strong language throughout this uh, entire uh, let's play. So, let's get right into it. So, this is kind of like a dating, uh, dating thing, but it's got a weird twist. As you can see, you can play up to four players here. I'm an, I'm a loner, so I only have one player. We're going to go ahead and do a full game here, and let's get into it. If you uh, if you've watched my Magical Diary series, you're going to be entertained by my strange voices again. Ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back when, back then, we were arguing and unafraid, sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. So we can choose who we want to be here. This guy, doppelganger, I think, of some kind. This guy, this lady is some sort of like fire genie. This is clearly a zombie, and this is uh, also a zombie, I think? No, this looks more like a Frankenstein monster. So I have played this a couple of times. I played through it like two or three times before, just so that I can get a good feel for the game. And I actually really like it. The humor is absolutely up my alley. Uh, we're going to play as Doppelman here, and we're going to name you, let's see, uh, we're going to name you C-H-A-R-L-E-S. Okay. Okay, let's sure go. Sure thing. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge of the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left as we fantasized about our dream prom dates. We were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Huzzah! Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Gah! Damien LaVey, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. <laughs> Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. <sighs> Liam de Lioncourt, 4XX, a hipster vampire whose, whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Yay! Polygeist, 22, question mark, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? And Vera Oberlin, 23, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense for business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. So as I mentioned, there's strong language throughout this, and this game is just absolutely batshit crazy. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quest ever, TM, throw, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. Alright, so we're starting the questionnaire. We have a little uh, rhino up there with a bunch of tattoos. Looks like he's a convict, maybe? Politics so real. You build a 100 foot statue commemorating an event so that in a thousand years, archaeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? We have three choices here. The glorious instance when your friend stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. That mind blowing twist of your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever, unlike that boring stuff they show on the news. Your least favorite political figure being devoured by rabbit rhinoceri, which are also covered in badass tattoos. We're gonna do that. We gain some boldness from that. Uh, that's Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon, Harry Potter. What is this? Fanfic <laughs> every, every Monday at 8. A radioactive possum just bit you. What superpower did you get? The incredible power of writing fanfiction so compelling the actual creators of the TV show decide to go with my ideas and crazy shit. Uh, Probably rabies? I'd go to the hospital immediately. A superpower of always choosing the right combination of emojis to get the desired reaction from all people, seducing my loved ones, burning my enemies, settling any argument, and even conveying complex emotional thoughts. Let's go with that. We get so charming. Oh. Your partner just gave you a cool gift for your anniversary, but you totally forgot. Quick, come up with an idea for a great gift. 
Anything capable of leading them to an overdose of some sort? A pony? Always a pony? A silly toy that makes silly noises? The enemy, the head of their fiercest enemy? The abstract concept of gratefulness? Anything on fire? Or a weapon? No, no, a weapon on fire. Uh, what would I give my partner whose anniversary I forgot? Uh, I would give them a silly toy that makes silly noises. We get a uh, wolf guy. All right. So what that did is it gave us a little bit of a relationship boost with uh, with wolf guy. All right. So here we go. You can see our stats up here, and if we hover over here, we get to see which location improves what stat. As long as you can remember the icons, but it should be fairly simple. Uh, kissy heart face there. That is charm. Boldness. The guy, red guy with glasses. Smartness is obviously the blue guy. We have fun, which is the yellow guy. We have money, which is the green guy, and then we have creativity, which is the this dude. All right. So our highest stats are charm, boldness, and smart. So I'm gonna want to get them uh, sorted out. So charm, boldness, and smart. So charm would be baseball, boldness would be the bathroom, and smarts would be the classroom. Let's go ahead and get charming up. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You, you're clearly a natural-born leader. Oh yeah, you gain plus two charm. Our charm is now at nine. Scott and Miranda seem to be arguing about something. Your sweet medallion skills, your sweet med meditation skills are clearly mm. needed. No, I know our football team is called the Spooky High Spooky Monsters who spook, but also who play sports. But who's our mascot? Our uh, mascot? Oh dang, you're right, we don't have one. Ooh, what about Misha the Mermaid? Mermaids are monsters? No way, too girly. Try this. Wally the Werewolf. Why's it gotta be a werewolf? We're the monsters, not the werewolves! Yeah, well, we're not the mermaids either. Hmm, maybe the problem is that the team name is trying to cover a huge diverse group of people with a single label? No, coach is never wrong. We're just not thinking hard enough. Think, think, think! Hey you, you look like a hard thinker. What mascot should we use for our team? Easy, we'll just genetically engineer a cross between every kind of monster at the school, Head of a werewolf, tail of a mermaid, head of a medusa, hair of a medusa, angst of a vampire, we'll call it Abe the Abomination. That sounds pretty good. Just find a regular human, dress him up in a business suit, and make him the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Corporate greed, that's the real monster. Let's go with this one. Finally, an idea that represents the true diversity of our school. We can use Daddy's Gene Lab. Let's see, in order to fit all the monster parts in, the mascot will have to be about a hundred feet tall, covered in nightmarish appendages and moist tentacles, which means it shall provide great shade on a hot game day. The tentacles can hold the umbrellas. Yeah, because deadly genetic experiments are always the shortcut to a girl's heart. You gain plus two smart and plus one boldness. That was pretty good. So we gained what? Two charm, two smarts, and one boldness. That is pretty good. Alright! So here, this is lunch. We can decide who we want to sit with. We have this cat lady here. We have this tiger man here. We have vampire and gorgon or medusa here. We have ghost girl and we have devil dude. And up here we have the same two people who we were speaking to. We're gonna go speak to them again. As you approach Scott and Miranda's table, you see that the entire table is covered in exotic silverware. Ooh, what's this one for? That's the forking spoon. It's a spoon for picking up your forks, so you don't have to touch them with your fingers. And that one? That's the tuning fork. It's for making sure all your other silverware are tuned to A minor, as is proper. What about this one? That's the dairy knife. It's for milk. Whoa! Do people ever invent new silverwares? All the time, but none of them are any good. It takes a genius of true subtlety to improve upon the existing canon. A genius of true subtlety. Genius and subtlety are your middle fucking names. You suggest the ultimate new silverware. The salad harp. A harp? For salad? Why has nobody thought of that before? Because it's hard to eat a salad with a harp. Cretin! Who said anything about eating? Isn't that what silverware is for? Well, perish the thought. 
The true purpose of silverware is to give your hand something to do while you elegantly avoid your food. And nothing is more elegant than playing a subtle lament on a harp while your serfs eat your salads for you. My serfs will finish my lunch for me. I'm off to have a har I'm off to have a harp commissioned. Miranda takes your harp shopping with her. Takes you harp shopping with her. It's a real bonding experience. Afterwards, you both ignore a salad together at a fancy restaurant. <laughs> Well, that sounds like it turned out pretty good. What's next? All right. All right. Let's see. Charm, smarts, and boldness. If we upgrade our boldness, we'll probably gain two. So let's... Oh, we, oh hold on. If we go to the bathroom, this cat lady is there. And what cat lady does is she sells you stuff. And it means that you can't upgrade your, your boldness by going to the bathroom here. All right, let's go get smarts or charm, smarts or charm, smarts or charm. Let's do some smarts. That day, you listen to your elders and learn a valuable lesson. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forgetting you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. You see Damien and Miranda with their heads in their hands. They look glum. You ask them what's <sighs> up. Ugh, we're boned. I don't know what this bone means, but I'm not optimistic about our chances on the upcoming exam. It's not fair. I shouldn't have to test. I shouldn't have to fail this test just because I spent all week in a really brutal mosh pit instead of going to class. And I did study. I had my servants read the entire textbook twice. But for some reason, my servants are not allowed to take the test for me. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Chop up the teacher and melt his body in acid. No! There's got to be another way! Doesn't there? Easy, just lobby the government until they remove the class from the entire school system. You don't need to murder your teacher over something like this, just burn down the entire school. <laughs> let's, let's do this one. Oh yes, of course! My father has many excellent lobbyists in cryo-freeze just for such occasions. Why are they in cryo-freeze? Because if allowed to live freely, they would pose an untold threat to the survival of the species, I think. It was Daddy's decision in any case, and Daddy knows best. The lobbyists do their job so effectively that the government not only cancels the class, but erases all memory of it from everyone's brain. You've got no idea what you've just unlearned, but the game plus two fun and plus one boldness. This game is crazy, as I mentioned. I love it. All right. All right, we are now in week two morning. What do we want to upgrade? I, I like how we can't click on anything here. We can click here, which is the probably, probably the same thing. But let's see. I want to get my creativity up to at least a 5. So creativity would be this place over here. Let's go to the auditorium. Hey, hey looking pretty dapper there, Mr. Doppelganger. That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a figurative blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two to your creativity. Alright, great. We've got everything above five. I think five is a, a threshold of some kind. Ah, the magic of the theatre. Nothing beats the particular brand of insanity of an amateur production starring non-actors. You notice Miranda is staring with admiration at Polly's costume. <laughs> oh, you got a plague, Dr. Mark. That does look pretty cool. Such detail! Such sparkle! What do these potions do? They're just props, Amiri. I think they're filled with coloured water. But imagine if they weren't. What wonderful things one could conjure up. A potion to attract princes. A potion to repel jerks. A potion to enhance beauty. A potion to repel jerks. Now you realise spending the last term doodling cool potion ideas in your notebook wasn't useless at all. You pick the coolest potion idea in your notebook to impress them. A potion that transports the drinker deep into outer space to explore the vastness of the universe. A potion that gives mayonnaise flavour to whatever you put it on. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Let's do that one. Um. Do you realise that basically mayonnaise? Indeed. The only limit towards your imagination and you went with mayonnaise. It's so amazingly vulgar! Could it even be genius? No, Miri, it's just idiotic. 
Oh, I see. I think you're right. Idiotic seems to be more accurate. It's so amazingly vulgar, I feel like I want to keep discussing this somewhere else. Polly? Totes. See a mayonnaise lover. Oh, now you're a mayonnaise lover, which is definitely worse than being Miranda or Polly's lover. You lose minus two boldness and one smart. Damn it! What did I what did I lose there? I lost fun? I needed a higher fun. Alright! Uh, oh well. Uh, let's see, who do I want to speak to? Let's go and speak with Polly. You find Polly and Scott huddled at your chosen table. If these two are together, it can only mean one thing. I hereby call this meeting of the Prank Masters to order. Prank Master Howell, President accounted for. Chairman Geistel dressed up and ready to prank. Hey, how come you get to be chairman? Well, which of us can throw chairs around the room without ghost powers? Well, I don't have ghost powers, so... Oh, you, I get it. Chair, man. But... No time to argue, Scott. We've got to come up with a baller prank. <clears throat> We've got to come up with a baller prank. Sorry. We've got to come up with a baller food prank before the end of lunch. Oh yeah, what if we ate all our food like a good boy? Is that a prank? No, Scott. For the last time, that's not a prank. And I don't eat. But I'm having trouble coming up with another idea. Anybody else? You've been waiting all your life for an opportunity like this. You propose the ultimate food prank. You replace all the food with chairs. Yes! You know what they say, when life gives you chairs, do pranks with the chairs! But I've never heard Coach say that. It doesn't sound like this kind of thing he would say. Doesn't it sound like the kind of thing he would say, though? Yeah, it kind of does. How am I supposed to help, though? You're the chairman. Easy, Scott. Just be a chair. Oh, of course! Scott twists himself into an uncomfortable-looking shape. He seems happy, though. Like this? Exactly like that! Now up you go! Wee! Does this make me a chairman? Sure, totally! Polly doesn't seem to mind sharing her title with Scott or her affection with you. Frank achieved. Ah. Alright! Alright, what are we doing now? I want to get... Uh, charm? Let's get charm up. Oh no, let's... let's... Go do creative day. I want to get creative day up again. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you can't help but feel that you're not as good as the role requires you to be. It doesn't seem to be any ordinary way of getting yourself there, but there might be an extraordinarily an extraordinary way. You summon the devil, one of many, and make a deal to enhance your creativity just a bit. You gain plus two creativity. You also lose minus three years of your life as your end of the deal. At the e as your end of the deal. Okay. But who cares? They weren't happening in game anyway. <laughs> you catch Miranda posing in front of a mirror, gazing dreamily at her reflection. Oh, how I would love to win the talent show! Of course, Daddy pays a dozen peasants to tell me how talented I am every morning, but that's not the same. After all, they're peasants. No, to hold that heavy, spiky trophy in my hands, or rather to have my servants hold it. Oh, that would make me the happiest princess in all the land. But I'm so nervous. What if they don't like my song? What if my skin is too scaly? What if I accidentally say a swear? Okay, Miranda. Be calm. Remember what Daddy says. If you don't calm down, failure is 100% assured. Ah, oh, that's not helping. Now I'm even less calm. Looks like Miranda's caught in the vicious cycle. Quick, help her out before she worries herself to death. Don't worry about the chumps in the audience. If they don't love you, then they're untalented and recognizing talent. I know a few great tricks for beating stage fright, just picture everyone naked. Uh, let's say if they don't love you, then they're untalented. Oh my! What a marvelously kind thing to say! You're right, of course. How silly of me to doubt it. It's as if Daddy... It is as Daddy says. We aristocrats are simply better than other people. You are quite perceptive for a commoner. And you know... If I don't do well in the talent show, I suppose that's all right. Daddy can always have the judges executed for their impudence. Oh my god. You're glad you're not judging at the talent show this year. You gain plus two smarts and plus one charm. Jesus, she really is into genocide. Alright. Alright. So we have 12 smarts, 10 charm. I want to get creativity up again. So let's... Oh, kitty girl is over there. 
Let's get boldness. So let's go to the bathroom. What are these two things? Am I actually meant to be a doppelganger? I don't even know what I am. B U something something S. Death overrated. Eight nine seven one two seven five. Call me. <laughs> the evolution face there. Magic mushroom. Jekyll. Where's Hyde? Anyway, that day you skip class and just hang out in the bathroom because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to ma want just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give plus zero ships, but you gain plus two boldness. After you finish doing your business, you hear a commotion in the next stall. It'll be polite to just ignore it and move on. Unfortunately, a cave troll taught you manners, so you kick the door open. Miranda and Liam are huddled around some bathroom graffiti and they seem confused. Maybe it's the password to a highly exclusive event. But what if the people aren't smart enough to figure it out? And why make it a secret? Well, obviously they don't want outsiders getting in. Father's beard, that's how it starts! What starts? The revolution! They're having a coup! No, no, it's probably like a party or something. Parties? That's exactly what revolutions are about! I'm too young to have a revolution! You're not sure why this random piece of bathroom scroll is so important, but it is a great opportunity to impress them both. You confidently tell them, isn't a bit obvious, it's an exclusive download code for internet hottest multimedia dating sim human prom. That's Polly's number. <laughs> Let's call it then. Please don't let it be a revolution! Hello, this is Polly. Very hot line. A subsidiary of Medusa Inc. Do I really need to say all this stuff, Vera? What? What's my deal if anything? What? Narrator? Okay, fine. Please note that your call is being recorded for future blackmail. They're my friends. Alright, alright, but you better not be joking about the literal mountain of cocaine. Please leave a message detailing all your most erotic desires and vulnerabilities after the beep. Beep! Well, that's it. It's just Vera's scheme to capitalize on Polly. Ugh. That's fantastic! Vera would never throw a revolution. She, she imports our surf labor. Wow, what? Anyway, thanks for helping us solve this. Revolution averted. With one ambiguous hotline. You can't help but wonder what exactly it's for. You get plus two smarts and plus one charm. Nice. All right. All right, so we have... Who, who are we going to speak to? We can speak to Miranda again. We can speak to Polly. Uh, we can speak to Wolfpack. I'll go see what Wolfpack's up to. You puff yourself up, hoping to look as big and tough as sporty as possible, and you take your seat next to the Wolfpack. Hey, you! Do you know what it means that you took a seat at the Wolfpack's table? Well, it probably means you don't care that much about defining which love interest you're pursuing. And, slash, or that table was already taken. It means you're now one of us! One of us! One of us! One of us! Don't get us wrong. The second lunch is over, we 100% go back to hating you because you're weak and not our level, bruh. But for now, you might as well enjoy your best werewolf life to the max! Sometimes we'd like to stick with just classic blankety hating all over other monsters, but other days, we like to be aggressively inclusive. And you caught us on an aggressively inclusive day! Yeah, bro! So what classic werewolf activity would you like to do in these brief glorious moments in which you get to be part of the T-E-E-A-M-E? -E -E? Hmm. Correcting their spelling of team probably isn't a classic werewolf activity. Better go with something more like practicing Ikebana, the ancient Japanese art of floral arrangement, just super wolfy. Howling at the moon. We love howling at the moon, but flirting with the moon is even better. Let's go outside and flirt with the moon right now. You head outside where the moon is visible in broad daylight because why the fuck not? Hey, that can happen. You kick things off telling the moon that you're so sorry to bother her, but you just want to say how much you appreciate the way she controls the tide so gracefully. Then Wolfpack sets up and continues the charming yet respectful tone you set. Hey moon, is there a mirror in your pocket because I can see myself in your pants? Ah uh, lol, never mind then. 
Hey Moon, are you an astronaut because your arse is out of this world and I can see myself in that too. Actually, so why are you an astronaut with a mirror in your... Actually, so you are an astronaut. <laughs> Actually, so are you an astronaut with a mirror in your spacesuit. Suddenly a piece of paper float washed down from the sky. It appears to be a letter and it reads, Dear Charles, thank you for respecting my boundaries and not using a crude opening line before we've even gotten to know each other. I'm very flattered and appreciative. Thank you again, the moon. Huh. I guess maybe it's a good idea to be respectful to women and treat them as people, even when sometimes they're the moon and not people. Yeah! Being respectful to women is the best! Let's get some pussy by being considerate res and respectful! Awoo! <laughs> what the hell? What the hell am I doing? <laughs> oh god. My eyes are watering. Alright. And with that, they're off. You hear laughter and look over to see Vera and Polly deep in conversation. A letter from the moon? Classic. Can't believe they fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing better than a good prank at someone else's expense is a prank that also teaches valuable lessons about being slightly less douchey. Ah, uh, well, that makes you. That makes way more sense than the moon actually writing a letter, but still. You gain plus four charm for not being disgusting. Whoa, plus four, that's amazing. Alright, week three evening. We're getting close to prom night, so we need to figure right. out what we want to do. Well, I definitely want to increase my boldness, so I'm gonna go piss off in the bathroom again. That day you skip class intending to spend the term in the bathroom. But you encounter three wild hyenas on the way there. Who the fuck runs security here? Anyway, you subdue them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the monster scouts and all their idiotic scenarios they prepared you for. By the time you get to the bathroom, you totally gain plus two boldness. Ah, oh, nice. Miranda, oblivious to everything that's happened, approaches you, Ugh, weeping. Disgraceful! Have you seen the news? The most dreadful thing has happened. The Lemurian monarchy has been overthrown! King Kraken no longer sits upon the throne of gold and baby skulls! Those filthy revolutionaries are saying he stole their daughters and ate their sons and fought everyone to work for free in the uranium mines! Though he made a few shrewd financial decisions, that's no reason to depose him! If someone innocent kidnapping and slave labour if some innocent kidnapping and slave labor was enough to get the peasants in an uproar, I shudder to think of my own kingdom. Do you think my people might resent being forced to hold up the corner of the palace where the foundation is crumbling? Jesus. Do you think the 100% income tax and the random cannonballs we fire into the villages might be taken as something other than expressions of goodwill? Could this plague of civil unrest infect my own domain? How oh, fair is the thought. I am inconsolable. Console me. I might have... How might I safeguard my kingdom against the fate of a good kraken? A uh, duh. Remain. Replace all your mindless subjects with mindless robots. I built a robot army a few months ago and I still have plans. Give all your subject belly rubs. Fishes love belly rubs. Let's do this one. This is fantastic. An army of good little robots to replace those perky serfs. Those pesky serves. I bet they wouldn't complain when we don't feed them for two weeks because we're having a party. And we'll finally be free to grind all our subjects up into paste and sell them as dolphin safe tuna, like we've always wanted. <gasps> My knight in shiny armor. Thank you, you've truly done a good deed today. You have serious doubts as to the actual goodness of your good deed, but hey. That's why you drink. <laughs> you gain plus two creativity and plus one money from tuna sales. Oh my god, tuna sales. Oh no, these things are sentient fish who are subjugated for their oh, entire man. lives. Oh man. Alright, our charm is through the roof. I want to upgrade. Let's see if we can upgrade our fun. Oh yeah, look at that. The day goes... That day during reset, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You game plus two fun. Oh man. You notice Vera and Miranda at the edge of the rave with their arms crossed. You dance over to try and find out what's up. I truly want to be excited about this uproarious event, but... I'll say... I'll say what we're both thinking. This rave looks like a techno trash fire. 
I did not wish to be crude, but it is true. I want to hang out and have a good time, but I cannot relax in this chaotic environment. I put some thought into this, and I think that the problem is a lack of colour coordination. It almost always is. That's why my father paints everyone in the kingdom aquamarine. Wow. But, we have no legal authority at this rave. How will we ever coordinate the colours? That's where I'm stuck right now, frankly. If only there was some way. Filter everyone through this dangerous magic prison. Color seeking German Shepherds. Put everyone through this dangerous magic prison. You pull out the prism of color separation that you crafted in your AP attack fashion class. <laughs> what? <laughs> you toss it into the center of the dance and it lights up an extremely deadly disco ball. It lights up like an extremely deadly disco ball. Look, it's sucking in students and spitting them out in lines according to the color of their outfits. Why are they screaming? Does it mean it's working? Yes, that's what it means. The prism destroys several students because it can't determine primary color of their outfits. <laughs> but that's what they get for not matching. You gain plus two charms and plus one smart. Wow, that turned out pretty well. Alright, what are we doing during noon? Well, we're sitting with Miranda, obviously. All right. And Miranda, it looks like there's a bunch of people sitting here. You arrive at your table to find the coven eating and Polly and Miranda screaming. <gasps> we're under attack! Alarm! Alarm! Summon the guards! They're using their bizarre mind powers on me! The cute tall one is my less attractive evil twin! She uses shades just like me, clearly because the evil twin thing... That one there? We're not attacking anyone. We're eating. What do you mean less attractive? Uh, disgraceful. Lies, such a huge. Ah, I can feel them in my brain, making me less cool and sexy. Ah. Always the same with you. Every single lunch hour. You can't allow your friends to be attacked. Quick, save them from this fiendish menace. Jump them in Miranda's honor. You slap a colander on your head, a baking sheet on your chest, and a jousting lance under your arm. My hero, charge, vanquish these invaders! We're out! Whoa, hey, we don't want trouble. We'll just move over there. <sighs> My knight in shiny armor! Victory! The day is saved! Oh, valiantly fought, noble champion! Huh? Whoa, did those three just disintegrate into a pile of turtles, or am I just super high? You think that question pretty much answers itself. Ah, Polly is the crackhead ghost. Alright! Alright. So, our smarts are real high. Our charm is incredibly high. I wanna up our fun. Give me your Oops. money! Hey, why would you study and prepare for your teacher when you can come in here and buy some weird shit instead, am I right? Alright, so let's see. Six, Dragon Heater Classics. It's so cheesy and stupid that you just can't stop reading it. I never thought that I would say this, but now I'm super into Dragon Abs. I can also buy a corpse. Yeah, I'm selling a corpse. It's like some kind of fashion accessory. It's not as if I'm trying to dispose of it. And this one is literally just a white blanket with two eye holes in it. You'd have to be an idiot to mistake this for a ghost costume, but most of our classmates are idiots. Wow. What, what, what do I want to get? What is this? A penguin mask. And a bag of regular cocaine. You want this, you sick pervert? I had no idea you appreciated the good reverse Romanian Wilkinson. I must admit, it's kinda hot that you're into that kinky shit. A pe- what? What? What's the reverse Romanian Wilkinson? Hype station. No, I wanna get- What do I wanna get? Let's get- Dragon Heat. See you later. And remember the first rule of Shop Club. No refunds. Okay, well that... I just bought that and used all my money on it, so... Hopefully that's not a bad decision. Alright, all right, let's see. What, what, what do I want to do? Fun is at 7. Let's go and increase our fun again. No, let's... I want to increase... Let's increase boldness. I don't bring boldness up to 15. Now dare you skip class and just hang out in the bathroom because you respect no authority? But you don't stop there, you want the world to know how reckless you are for the rest of eternity. 
that you do some graffiti on the wall. No way! The graffiti says, I'm bold as fuck, and you know what? It turns out the wall is a magical wall that grants wishes. What a wall! A deep voice resounds from within the wall and says, Well, not bold as fuck, but maybe a bit bold, and then you gain plus two boldness. Oh boy, that's an opinionated wall. Anyway, lucky you. You're wandering down the hallway, reading Dragon Heat as discreetly as you can, which immediately, which apparently isn't very, because Polly and Vera clocks this immediately. Ugh, Ugh are you actually reading erotic fanfiction about dragons? Yes! Because we love Dragon Heat! I'm all about 19th century Russian literature, but I'm a ghost girl. But a ghost girl can't say no to some erotic fanfic, am I right? I've literally been working on my Morgana von Bristrick cosplay all week. Don't worry about why. Speak for yourself, Polly. I don't. I've never. Okay, fine, I'm... Okay, fine, I may read Dragon Heat. But don't go around just telling people. Psh, we're clearly safe with him. That's Miranda. Psh, we're clearly safe with him. A fellow Dracophile can always be trusted. Are you sure? I mean, anyone into Dragon Heat must have a wicked mind. 297 chapters and counting, it still manages to amaze me with new levels of wrong. Yeah, right? I fucking love it. Yet, I must admit, I'm a bit vanilla when it comes to the faith chapters. Mine is the one where Harold McDohard... McDonga... <laughs> oh my word. Mine is the one where Harold McDonghard, Horace, the Hydra, and the deranged Draco Delacorte have to rest at an inn after the Choking Bay adventure. Only to discover they have just one available bed. There's only one bed, the classic fanfic trick that never fails. Ha! Yes, that one was good. I personally prefer the one where Vanessaria unmasks her favorite, her masked savior after a passionate kiss, only to discover it is herself. And then they totally bang. I'm not afraid of time travel, but sign me up for some good self cest Amen. What about you, Charles? What is your favorite story arc? Nothing to worry about. You'll just be revealing your inner kinks to us. No pressure. Easy. The Sex Calibur arc when they want to discover the chosen one who can control the mythical Sex Calibur dildo, and they have a super orgy where everyone can have their turn with the dildo. Oh, the Sex Calibur arc? I mean, it's a good one, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of controversial, don't you think? The great King Thalacio III organised the Sexcalibur trial where everyone tried the mythical Sexcalibur dildo. And it was all in good fun, but it turned out the legend was a lie invented by the King who just wanted to have an orgy with everyone. So even if everyone enjoyed it a lot, it spawned a very long and unnecessary, uh, very long and necessary conversation on consent. Um, with Vera here, they also never depict any proper orgy preparation. And being the literature buff that I am, I can understand the writer didn't want to spend their time that what didn't want to spend their time there and the reader should assume it happened, but it's still kinda of problematic too. Nothing as good as a good old orgy. But not so good if it lacks the correct preparation for health and hygiene. Dunno, Charles. I'm not sure what to think of the what to think of the dra if the Sex Calibur arc is your favourite in Dragon Heat. We can assume he just wanted to play cool and edgy to impress us, and he failed. Yeah, boo! Don't go all try hard on us. There's nothing as sexy as being yourself. Agreed. And so they leave. Well, you failed that one. Kind of difficult not to try too hard when romancing them, since this is technically a dating sim. But still, you lose two charm and one boldness. Ah, oh, no! My charm is now at 15, an all-time low. Alright! All right, let's see. Let's go here. All right, I'm trying to comprehend your request. What is there to comprehend? It's really simple, Miranda. Take my cell phone, snap a pic of me face planting in my food with my eyes closed and tongue out. But where for? Right here, Miranda. You're about to point out that wherefore means why, but luckily Polly elaborates on her own, so you don't have to look like a fucking know-it-all. It's a new meme, Miranda. 
like planking or dabbing. It's called food poisoning, and it's dope as fuck. Don't you have cool trends in your kingdom? Hmm, I suppose we do. Oh, we have a fun trend called Revere Your Rulers. It's where you show nothing but the utmost dedication to the royal family. If you're good at it, you get a lot of likes on social media, and also not executed. Do you ever listen to yourself when you speak? I bet you know some pretty cool trends, don't you, Charles? Heck yeah, you do, don't you? Sure I do, it's entitled Silverware Wear. And it's where you take your most expensive cutlery and dress it in very fancy tiny outfits. Yep, it's called dyeing. <laughs> Let's see this one. Yes! Dying is my fucking fave. I mean, listen, the first time I did it I was like, hmm, okay, now I don't get to be alive anymore. But then when all the cool ghost stuff kicked in, I was like, oh my god, dying is awesome. Everyone should die. <laughs> wow, oh my, Jesus Christ. I'm not sure I'd be into this dying trend. But I do know that Daddy's reign helped many peasants achieve this meme. So it's nice to know they are becoming super popular in social media in the process. Remind me not to ever hang out in Miranda's kingdom on break. But hey Charles, maybe you and I can hang out and do some dying together. Yay, maybe. Yeah, yay. I'm not sure if my character can die. He's a doppelganger, so maybe he can die? I don't know. All right. What does a doppelganger ghost look like? Alright, let's see. Let's improve boldness again. We're just gonna go throughout class being absolutely ship broke. That day you visit the bathroom, so take a number two. But don't worry, there won't be an illustration of that specific moment. Thing is, you make one of the boldest decision decisions in your life. You don't put paper on the toilet seat before using it. Jesus. And look at you, you crazy bastard. You gain plus two boldness and probably plus one staphylococcus with a slight chance of plus one STD. Ew. Later, you're carrying around your precious dragon heat when you're spotted by Miranda and Damien? <gasps> wow, dragon heat! I love it! Also, you may not know this about Damien to look at him, but it turns out that he too is a hopeless romantic at heart. <laughs> Are we reading the same series? I'm in it for Dragon Dong, Miri. Nothing so bad yet so good as a billionaire dinosaur made me gay. Damien, you're being utterly foul. Don't profane the deep emotional connection between Harold McDonghard and Godiva Galantina. Deep emotional connection? Is that why the latest chapter ends with Harold finally boning Godiva? And then she wakes up to find him gone? The cliffhanger must be entirely misleading. People simply don't abuse each other's love and trust that way. I worry about you, Miri. I really do. I just desperately want to know what happens next Dragon Heat. Do you think Harold is capable of being so mean-spirited? True art imitates life. Let's look at Damien's Tinder messages to see what he's capable of, shall we? Harold may or may not be a scoundrel, but love is alive and well. Let me take both of you on the greatest three-way first date ever to prove it. Ooh. A date? In the midst of a school day? Why, my duty, responsibility, and breeding say no. But my heart say yes. I have a midterm in interdimensional peace 305, so anything better than that. Oh, huzzah! I do love being courted. Let us flee to the absolutely most romantic day that has ever happened to me. Ever. Yay. Oh, I did not read that. You show up with chocolate flowers and a bevy of merce slaves from Miranda and a pack of matches and a gallon of gasoline for Damien. The three of you go on an absolutely splendid date during which Damien only commits a few murders. He gained plus two fun, plus one charm. Sweet, our fun is nearly at the highest it can be. Well, at 10, which I wanted to be at. It can be higher than that. The highest stat I've had was like 23. So we're gonna definitely go do some fun. That day during reset, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You're casually chatting with Juan the Magical Latino Cat. You start telling him that hilarious story of what happened last summer at Monster Camp. You know which one. The one involving the beehive, the blow-up doll of the president, the penguin mask, and the mystery of the Goblin King. 
Wait, didn't we see a penguin mask? Slowly, lots of people start joining you to hear the story. By the time you say where the Goblin King was, a hundred or so people burst into hysterical laughter. You turn on a mobile app that captures the laughter and turns it into plus two fun. Sweet. Our stats are pretty good. You see Miranda hovering in the hallway, whistling to herself and checking out her reflection in her own scales. Why hello there, Charles. How funny and random to see you here entirely by coincidence near your locker. Oh my god, this girl is crazy. I think I think you've got a line here. Thing is how we've been getting on so well lately, I've decided to afford you the honour and privilege of taking me to the seahorse races. You can pick me up after school today and bring me an assortment of flowers and chocolates as a gift. You are welcome. Oh man, a chance to buy ship from Miranda and take her out on an outing you have no interest in? Sounds amazing, let's rock! You go to the horse races and look for Miranda. She's wearing a beautiful and intricate horse race hat. Unfortunately, a sudden gust blows that hat away. You could swear you could hear the wind whispering, Not enough budget. But surely it must have been your imagination. No, my hat! Hey Charles, I'm here! Hi, look at this! Daddy always gives me money when I go to the seahorse races. It isn't much, of course. Only three... million... money. I was counting the zeros there. But it should still make things a lot more fun to bet. Of course, nothing is nothing would sour this lovely day faster than picking a losing horse. So I'll put this daunting choice entirely on you. How should we choose the winning seahorse so that this day goes in memory as a pleasurable experience rather than a sign we should never speak again? Oh gee, no pressure then. But no worries, you know the perfect method for choosing winning racehorses. The only way to tell a winning seahorse is by taste. Why watch people ride seahorses when you could be riding me? No, literally though. Get me a title and let's enter the race. Right, you? Why? This is an option I've never even contemplated. I've never heard of one person riding another before. Oh, Miranda. Bless. If there's one thing I've learned from years of helping Daddy suppress peasant uprising, it's that if you want something done right, have your servants do it themselves. But since they're not here, I suppose that makes you my servant. Let's do it. Let's win the race ourselves. The two of you sneak down to the stables and quickly fo forge the necessary paperwork to enter the race. At the sound of a Mergan shot, you and your fellow seahorses are off running. You- what? <laughs> what? You run as fast as someone who is hoping to earn a prom date with a beautiful mermaid princess, which is very fast. So fast, in fact, you somehow managed to outrun over a dozen seahorses who have been chaining their whole lives for this moment, undoubtedly crushing their hopes and dreams. And the winner is, boomed the announcer, Princess Miranda, riding Charles. Jesus. Oh, huzzah! What a glorious victory this is! Asserting my superiority over my subject is not only by birthright, but also by sheer talent. It does seem like you did most of the heavy lifting, as it were, since Miranda isn't particularly heavy. Good. <laughs> I don't think the narrator would get away with calling her fat. But why spoil this beautiful moment? This has been a perfectly wonderful outing. I should very much like to ride you again sometime. If only she knew what she was saying. Still, that's better than... not. You gain plus two money from the bet and plus one charm from being ridden by a princess. Alright. All right. All right. So we need to figure out who we want to the next day. I mean, very definitely Miranda. This 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 person here looks crazy. Let's go with Miranda. I feel like we're wooing Miranda. You arrive at your chosen table to find Miranda folding napkins at Vera. Do you want to know what this one is for, Vera? No. I'll take that as a yes. The rose-shaped napkin fold is for birthdays between the ages of 16 and 22. Miranda's hands moves as fast as lightning, turning the rose into a gorgeous white swan. By contrast, this swan folding is for first weddings, third weddings, and swan giveaways. As a fashion enthusiast, I've never been so bored by a piece of fabric. Oh, and this black swan folding is for weddings where you plan to brutally murder all the guests. 
Not very popular, the black swan folding. Okay, that's sort of cool, but I'm still aggressively uninterested. You happen to have some napkin folding skills of yourself. Of course I do. Maybe you can spice up this interaction. You decide to show off your most impressive napkin fold. If you fold the napkin like so, it creates a self-aware napkin whose sole purpose is to fold more napkins. This writhing snake fold is for when it is time to leave Vera alone and stop explaining that- oh, Wow! So passive aggressive! Let's create the self-aware napkin whose sole purpose is to fold more napkins. Oh, that's adorable! Look at it folding everyone's napkin! It's like a tiny adorable surf! It looks like it's folding the other napkins into more self-folding napkins. I know, it's so efficient! Go, little napkin sir, be free! Aren't you worried this will turn into a self-replicating napkin scenario, progressing geometrically until the world is nothing but napkins? Why? That sounds lovely! God, you're impossible. You seem to have mispronounced impeccable. Whatever. I'm leaving before the napkins take over the world. Barry leaves you alone for a romantic lunch with Miranda. You can't hang out for too long though, you've got to stop those napkins before they take over the world. <laughs> oh, nice. Alright! Alright. Uh, looks like Cat Lady isn't here. Let's go... We should probably upgrade our boldness. Let's go... Bathroom again. That day you skip class and hang out in the bathrooms because you expect no authority. While in the bathroom, you tell yourself in the mirror that you're so bold you would kill a tiny big-eyed turtle with your bare hands. That monstrous act would instantly give you plus 500 boldness. Come on, you're just talking to yourself in the mirror. What's the merit in that? You know what? You can keep plus 2 boldness for it anyway for saying that to yourself out loud. You're doing the thing that gives you the most life, reading Dragon Heat, when you're approached by Scott and Liam. Aha! A fellow connoisseur of the Dracophilic arts. Here Scott and I are also experts on the topic. An unexpected duo. Hooray! Yeah! Liam and I are fandom buddies. We love... I forgot his voice. We love to discuss things we love on our favourite stuffs like... On our favourite stuffs wikis and forums. We're the best fandom buds. Even if we don't always agree. Like with the Starker and Markapoo thing. What? Okay, first let's be clear. I engage in passionate fandom conversations only as an ironic way of celebrating low culture, which I truly despise. Second, for the hundredth time after spending years in Hecapoo's dimension, Marco is now actually in his thirties, so it isn't right if he dates a sixteen-year-old girl. These details matter, Scott. Think about how wrong it would be for me in my 400 to date someone to date people from this school if all of you were actually teenagers instead of being much more conveniently in your 20s. Well, that explains why all of these people are still in the high school. Anyway, enough meta discussion. Scott and I are here in a situation. Even if our opinions differ, we agree our opinions are superior in comparison to the rest of the strangers on Dragon Heat Wiki. Yes to that! Liam here is like, super smart, and I'm a good boy, so my ideas should be good too. But people on the Wiki can be really mean sometimes. We need to gain their respect so we can convince them to be good boys too. Scott's right. We need to somehow earn the role of moderator so we can show all those lesser beings who's boss when it comes to the Dragon Heat fandom. But how? I'm sure you'll give us an absurd yet effective idea for a solution, as can be expected from good old Charles. Oh boy, okay, what do we what do we undo? Let's ask them nicely if they can stop behaving like internet trolls and instead start respecting your opinion. Let's write a powerful fanfic set on the Dragon Heat, Twi Dragon Heat Wiki, where you're depicted as the coolest u users who should all be respected. Not so creative, I have 10 creativity! Ah yes, let's fight wielding arts. Let's fight wielding arts as our weapon. Yeah, weapons are super fun. Liam opens a new document on his laptop. Come on, Charles, amaze us with your fanfic magic. Oh dang, you never thought you were going to be the one doing the writing. You weren't prepared for this. Let's see what happens. Liam and Scott read as you write. 
Liam and Scott and Charles were very cool and nice and they lived in the Dragon Heat Wiki Community Kingdom. And they were so very cool and so very nice that everyone said, Hey, Liam and Scott and Charles are very cool and very nice. We should make Liam and Scott and Charles our kings. And so Liam and Scott and Charles were the kings of Dragon Heat Wiki Community Kingdom because they were the most cool and most very nice in the kingdom. And everyone became centaurs and they had centaur sex. Now you're just writing pages and pages of centaur sex? It's perfect! Right, Liam? I like the part where he said the three of us were very cool and very nice. It's not perfect, Scott. And you can't use centaurification just cause. Centaurification is a very delicate fanfic tool that needs to be used under the right circumstance. I think Charles was just trying to fool us into reading his extremely dirty centaurification fit. So not cool. Oh, he almost fooled me by saying we were very cool and very nice. That was... Very not cool and very not nice. Very not cool and very not nice indeed, my dear Scott. Why do you always have to turn to centaurification? Why do you always have to turn to centaurification when anxiety writing? Well, at least you got them to read your extremely dirty centaurification fic. Still, you lose minus two charm and minus one creativity. Oh boy. So what? What? Oh, we we get to ask someone out on a date. Oh boy, who? I mean, Miranda. Miranda. Let's do it. Da, 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 da. Yes. All right. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Yuck. Ugh. My sister told me that I could get diseases if I dated commoners. Stuff like crabs or poverty. I must decline. Ugh, disgusting. It's okay. You moved on from this horrible and shameful failure. You became a functional person and eventually met a sweet bunch banshee called Ash. You shared lots of common interests and after dating for some years you married. One day in the middle of a casual conversation you mentioned how you couldn't get a date from for Monster Prom. Despite your years of happiness your marriage couldn't endure such a pathetic revelation and so Ash abandoned you the next day. And thus you lived the rest of your life alone and sad. Never forget Monster Prom is the most important thing. Oh man. Most diplomatic smile? Miranda's quote. What? Why can't I use my quoting sir for this quote? How disastrous! Jesus. There's 388 events here and I've only done 65? And 1384 outcome? What in the hell is this? I mean I've done this before but I've never like clocked on to the numbers. I've apparently gotten 0 out of 22 endings. So... <laughs> I completed this game like one, two. How, how many times did I, did I do it? I tried to do. I think I tried to do Miranda once, but I think I've done it three times before this. But we've got 15 new events, 15 new outcomes, no new secret endings. Huh. <sighs> well. Alright. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. What the hell are you? After Monster Prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Miranda got a job being a princess of her kingdom, which it was actually kind of her job already? Well, you surely don't see her complaining about it. Liam honed his most admirable skill and got a job with it. He now designs Instagram filters. <laughs> Damien found peace in the most unexpected way. He kept punching everything till one day he punched his own anger to death. Jesus. He had written a book about it. <laughs> During those three weeks, Monteprom seemed bigger than life and then it was gone. Just like that. The battle for Monteprom might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left behind in what called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid and we were ready to start. Well, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is it for this attempt uh you can there are like who is that zombie man who who are these people on the sides here i don't i don't know who any of these guys are but yeah these are these are the credits Ooh, poison ivy lady i want to play a poison ivy lady but yeah i i like this game uh this game clearly is not meant for like like no world building it's all about like the relationships between people and the sheer entertainment that you get from the absurdity of it all. And that is what I really love. Uh, my D&D &D campaign itself has a few themes like that. 
uh, they're one damage like a serious world building element. I do like doing uh, random shit every now and then. But yeah, we, we haven't met like any, like, well, we've met people. We haven't met everyone yet. Like, let's see. We haven't met that crazy, uh, excuse me, that crazy person in the hood. Uh, we met that cat lady. That cat lady is the, uh, the, the store person, right? Captain Emoji, Hayden, Haley, Scarban, R. Only one of those people were called R. Oh hey, look at it, nearly all of the characters. Well, that was only two of the characters. But yeah, thanks for playing. And thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you next time.